Who told you God cannot give you a house? Who told you God cannot pay rent? You are calculating what is in your account. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Who told you God cannot give you visibility? Who told you God cannot sort the shame? You are owing. You are not the first to owe. You remain thinking like that. That debt, there are people who have owed to the billions of dollars God brought them out. Shake away that doubt and believe God tonight. Apostles, because you don't know my problem, let me tell you the truth. I submit to you not to insult your pain, but there is nothing happening to you that is happening for the first time. The Bible says the thing that is, is the thing that was, and is the thing that is to come. The things that are written aforetime, the pain that was written aforetime, the limitations, the defeats, the weakness, written aforetime, is for our learning. So that we through patience and comfort of scripture might find hope. For someone you came to church tonight to repent from idolatry. You have pinned your uncle's picture everywhere in your house. Shouting day and night. This man will not sleep. You are joking. God is not that wicked. The man is praying over his own life. Give me sleep. And you are in your room praying and saying he should not sleep. If you were God, which one will you answer? The man is asking God, you are my lifter, give me sleep. And someone else who should be looking on to Jesus, you are looking on to the man and say, God wake that man, he will not sleep. Abba, look on to Jesus. I'm telling you, God is speaking to someone here. Apostle, there's this contract, so there's this senator. His things are already working. Let me advise you, my dear businessman, I don't mean to insult your experience. Drop that phone contact. Drop your contract on the ground and say, Lord, if you do not help me, help cannot come from anywhere. And watch the God of heaven. You see, this is what makes men, is what leads to human worship. Because when you show men, if you don't help me, I'm dead. It's a lie. It's an insult on the power of God. It's the reason why when the miracles happen tomorrow, they look at you, they say, I made you who you are. And if you don't bow to me this way, I will punish you. But not God. When God leaves you, you have peace. You owe every man thanks, not worship. When God leaves you, you owe the man he used thanks. And then you owe the God who used them worship. But when men become both your source and the vehicle, they don't want thanksgiving alone. They want worship. Are you getting how it works now? When God becomes your source, then the only thing you owe men is deep honor and gratitude and never fail to do that but when men become your source and the only thing you come and tell them is thank you they say you are joking thank you for what for being god no you don't thank god alone you worship god and if a man becomes your god then you are forced to both thank and worship him may i never worship any man the three hebrew boys told nebuchadnezzar he said oh king matter of honor we will give you honor matter of gratitude gratitude but when you come to the realm of worship you have touched an area that is beyond your jurisdiction our god can deliver us is someone learning number two let's hurry up do you know this already is someone's is someone's miracle this is what you came to church to learn let god choose the men that help you you can honestly talk to him lord i know you can use this man however let your will be done and god will say because you trust me enough to use both the men you know and the ones who do not you do not know if abraham were to choose the person who will prosper him he will not choose abimelech but it was abimelech god used to give him great gifts two what is the second key? Let me recap that. Number one, you must know and burn it at the back of your heart that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. From God and God alone. Number two, you want to receive from God, especially at a miracle service like this, you must have defined expectations. Defined expectations. Faith is vision dependent. Faith, you can't believe God for nothing. You can't believe God for vague things. 
Faith is vision dependent. You must have defined expectations. Don't just have expectations. They must be defined. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day, Matthew 6, 10, our, or 6, 11, our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, this is what I'm trusting you for. Daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. Most believers come to God and you will be surprised, and I say this with all due respect, how many believers are here gathered and the men is scattering, you know, scattered ab ab abroad, following online, who are watching. You ask them, what are you trusting God to do for you? They say, well, I'm just connected to a miracle service. I, I like this man of God. He's about to pray. Let's just release our faith. But what do you want God to do for you? He came to blind Bartimaeus and he said, what do I do for you? Blind Bartimaeus said that I may receive my sight. If blind Bartimaeus said I was hungry, perhaps he would have just given him something to eat. Defined expectation. Father, heal my son from autism. Defined expectation. Lord, I am trusting you for a good job. A job that is able to pay me this much so that I can do this for my family. Defined expectation. Give me a man child. Defined expectation. Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm releasing my faith for a house. Defined expectation. God, give me anything you want to. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's not how. It looks very sincere. But the, the theology of receiving from God demands defined expectations are we together what do you trust God for father and anointing the spirit of wisdom this is what I'm trusting to rest upon my life I'm trusting that favor will rest upon my life oh so that when it comes you will know it has arrived are we together now yes now God can surpass your expectations in fact he will but the ladder that gets to that surpassing is your defined expectation. What are you trusting God for? Lord, I'm trusting you to overturn a verdict. I'm trusting you to bring me healing. I've been diagnosed of cancer, stage two, stage three, stage four. Don't just say heal me. Of what? At least the doctor, medicine has helped you. You've zoomed down what the problem is. If you do not know what the problem is, then that is fair enough. But when you know, you mention it. It's the reason why we guide people by helping them to tabulate their expectations. It's not a ritual. It's to be able to guide you so that you methodically pen down, using your own hands, engaging your own faith. God for you. When he takes the stage and begins to lead you, you will watch with wonder your own life. Then you will know that he's the one leading you and you will see the glory that comes out of such a life. It becomes clear that this one bar is the hand of God. I don't know why I'm staying here to press it. This, uh, this is what God wants to deliver someone from. Unbelief. The truth is we don't trust God. We think we do. It's a lie. We trust rich people. Huh? We trust gatekeepers. And it will flow through them. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying the dynamics is always from God. If you miss that, you have turned into idolatry. And I pray for someone here. That everything you came here genuinely believing God for. Honestly, may the God of all grace surprise you. So key number two, you must have defined expectations. Let's hurry up number three. The third requirement is that you must believe in the Lord your God and you must believe in the vessel that he will use to meet your need. You must believe in the Lord your God as your source, but you must believe in the vessel. If you believe God alone and don't believe in the vessel, you will not receive, surprisingly. The Bible demands that you believe in both God as your source and the vessel as the channel he will use to reach you. 
believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established second Chronicles 2020 believe also his prophets so shall you prosper you don't believe in the vessels as your source I have told you but when it leaves the source it needs a channel to you there are times where from the water board the dam everything is fine water begins to flow there and then something happens and maybe there's a, a bust in a pipe do you know that an entire community perhaps in abuja here can be without water and when you call the water board they said the problem is not from our end everything is fine we've released water to get to every community but for some reason there was a pipe bust somewhere and some persons will suffer but it is natural to blame the water board but they will tell you we will come to fix it but it's not our it's not it's not from our end at all that's how it is blessings can leave heaven but when the the vessel to deliver it to you does not have that capacity or you're not believing in that vessel it affects the delivery you must believe in the lord jesus christ but you must also believe in the vessel that he uses number four the fourth and final key for tonight to prime your faith as we release ourselves into what God intends to give us tonight is you must take actions of faith. You must take actions of faith, actions of obedience. So God would have done his part being the source. The vessel would have done his part being a worthy channel, but the final recipient must do his own part by receiving by faith if you do not receive it will stop that flow i can give you something and you can reject it as many as received him even to them that believe on his name he gave them power that means not everybody received him but as many as received him as one eight he shall receive power anything to be received can be rejected you shall receive healing. You shall receive breakthrough. You shall receive open doors. You shall receive, meaning you can reject it if you don't know how to receive. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. How do you receive? By faith. By complying with prophetic instructions. If an instruction comes to shout by faith, it is not mere gibberish. It's not playing on your intelligence. No. Oh, check yourself do what you couldn't do before you don't say well the pain is still there no you act the Bible says Peter and John told the man such as I have give I unto you in the name of Jesus rise up and walk and the man was still watching there do you know if they left that man there he would have remained crippled forever the Bible said Peter reached him and carried him up corresponding actions of faith if you are an unsaved person, you've not encountered Jesus and it's the time for the altar call and you hear the message so nicely and you say, wow, I love the way this man introduces Jesus and you don't come out to actually make that decision. You will still go back home unsaved. The miracle always happens at the point of obedience. Someone say actions of faith. One more time, say actions of faith. From checking yourself to receiving by faith, believing, to going to, perhaps you are coming here let's say high blood pressure the medical stand they are there and able and ready while the word of god is coming if you believe that word is for you and you are suffering from bp and you just sit down you're smiling i mean what's the distance between you and the medical stand you go there and tell them i've been prayed for they are people of faith they are not just doctors they are not just professionals they've been trained to believe god they have watched miracles happen right there in their presence oh i came here with hiv and prayer has come now you go and check not every miracle sadly may be verified immediately because there are other miracles that require medical tests but do you do it most believers don't do it apostle my own is bp to not uh, they've stopped you from eating everything because of bp it's almost as if the only thing you take now is water and god wants to liberate you now the prayer comes fire comes from heaven take a step of faith and go and check it if you sit back there and say well i think I'm, I'm really feeling nice you may not be healed you may not be healed 
you need to take that step. I'm feeling a pain. It's, it's an excruciating pain. Or there's a kneecap something. They've told me I'll do a surgery. In the name of Jesus, God is visiting us. The man of God is ministering now. He says, check yourself. By faith, do I do so? At the point of releasing your faith, you see that the power of God flows. Are we together? Oh, I don't hear very well. I'm blind on both eyes or blind on one eye. Don't sit down and say, will it happen? I know it happened for so, 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 and so. You may be in a situation like our dear sister who shared. You see that now? After the word of God comes, you go and check yourself at the convenience. Meet the medical doctors. When a genuine miracle happens, it does not conflict with medicine. Are we together now? The doctors will confirm it. You will know you have been touched. You will feel you have been touched. You will check your hands. You see that the miracle has happened. And it doesn't matter whether you are in here, all the overflows, or outside, or online. You hear the, the story of the gentleman who had the, you know, the growth there? You would think because he's in Abuja here, he'll be healed in Abuja. With all due respect, only God knows that the word of God had been coming, but perhaps he did not engage as should be. So God decided to route it through Canada. The most important thing is that the power of God got to him. May God not route yours through Canada. May God not route yours through UK. May God not have to route yours when you are watching a rebroadcast. That now that you are here, knowing the power of God is present to heal. If you say Jesus is already saved, I mean Jesus has died. I don't believe I'm a sinner unfortunately that's not how to be born again you can live in that deception till you go to hell but when you come own up i am a sinner but i receive of the substitutionary sacrifice now that finished work becomes potent there and then in your life same thing with sickness no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick but experientially now we do not see all things yet under his feet when you believe jesus and you engage the principle that makes for healing the hearing of faith and actions of obedience that healing stream finished in christ becomes a reality in your life now yes he has been made the head over principalities and powers you should not have any cause again in christ you are right you should not have any demonic attack in christ but until that reality is engaged it remains a finished reality from the spirit while demons oppress you every day and deceive you into believing you are all right when you are all right it becomes clear that you are all right are we learning every truth finished in christ must be engaged by faith for the experience of that victory to be made manifest the same grace that saved you is the same grace that prospered you why is your account not speaking it now it does not mean the work is a lie there is something to engage in partnership to make that experience happen it's the same thing with deliverance the same package brought everything he was the son has eternal life he who has the son has eternal life i have the son so i have eternal life has god helped someone tonight so that when we rise to pray you'll be angry in your spirit i will not go back the way i came i may not know your problem except some of them are revealed to me prophetically but it doesn't matter the situation you can be angry if he's healing you know what to do now you watch for the word i may not even have to mention your case maybe you are outside somewhere scattered at the the back end it doesn't matter once there is the hearing of faith maybe you are connected in a hospital you have nothing to lose you are not paying to receive so release your heart receive give god a chance you have given things of lesser value lesser integrity a chance why don't you give the god of the bible a chance can he make my life absolutely can he help me absolutely can he redefine my possibilities apostle my own is that i have made foolish decisions in my life as i'm seated right now i don't even know where to start from let me tell you where to start from follow the pattern of the prodigal son come to yourself come to yourself the prodigal son too did not know what to do come to yourself number two allow yourself to be assisted that's why god sent us here when the prodigal son said to himself i will arise and go 
So when it's time to come and be saved, we connect you to the Father. That's where you start from. Then the Word of God comes and begins to culture your understanding. Your possibilities are a product of your mentality, enhanced by demonic presence. So your deliverance will start by that healing of your spirit called salvation. Then a reorientation of your spiritual understanding through the Word of God. That's how your deliverance happens, holistically. Listen, when you understand the kingdom system, you will know that there is a way out of everything. There is a way out of everything. There is a way out of everything. I'm going to request that you lay your hands on your head and for the next two or three minutes, please cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I desire a testimony. Let it be clear that I met you tonight. Someone pray. Apostle, I don't have a job. That's my one problem. I'm trusting you to give me a job. Let me tell you what to do. As the word of God comes, whether you came here with your CV or not, it doesn't matter. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I know that there is a portion for me. God is a God of portions. I have taught you that the increase of the field is for all. And even the king is fed from that which comes from the field. That means if you are in Christ and you are an inhabitant upon the earth, there is a portion for you. But it is God who gives men their portion. They don't find it by themselves. No. So your prayer for a job will not be, oh God, give me a job. There is always something for you. It is that God will give you speed and bring it to you. Help, help that gentleman running there. Speed. Are we learning now? Apostle, I am a man of God. And in, I love God. Walking in integrity, I love Jesus with all my heart. But ministry is not working. Let me tell you the thing. Three things I'm, are missing. I will tell you with all humility. Crash course, ministry 101. The first thing missing is wisdom. And wisdom is not just to execute and get an answer. There is a track record. People don't follow you till they trust you. Even if God calls them to walk with you. They will watch you from afar until they believe you are worth their leadership. Nobody will come to you just because you are anointed. Heal everything you can heal. They will still watch from afar. Your consistency and that track record. You see that now? Jesus was not born on the day men started looking for him. He had been born years before. But his consistency, a day came. It's called the season of appearing. Is God helping someone? I wish I could simulate different problems and tell you how to solve them spiritually because most believers do not know how to engage by faith. Shouting amen is wonderful, but there is a portion of this receiving that is only you and God. Only you and God. Only you and God. Only you and God. Are we together? Apostle, me, I'm not sick. But the kind of demonic activities in my life, I will even choose sickness. Because the way I've been suffering, let me tell you the way out. That one even makes it easy. Huh? Because what you need to do is the hearing of faith. The power that takes away the influence of those demons from your life does not come from you. It comes from God. Your, your own is to believe that there is such a thing as demonic attacks and to believe that there is also such a thing as the victory of Christ and the assignment of a miracle service like this is through the power of the prophetic to superimpose the victory that has been wrought in Christ experientially to be superimposed over your situation just believing that without prayer everything is gone you will waste your time living in 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 in, um, in, in deception and the demons will be happy that you sustain that mindset. Nothing in the kingdom that comes from God actually arrives the believer's life without his engaging them. Not salvation, not healing, not deliverance. As free as salvation is, if you don't confess Jesus, you will still go to hell. So why will it be different from healing? Why will it be different from deliverance? The logic is the same. Apostle, mine is not sickness, I'm in debt. How do I respond? Let me tell you how to respond. Number one, I have taught you that all blessings come from God through men to men. Are we together? But that there is an anointing that has to come upon your head. Is that true? That causes the men to come. So your assignment right now, forget about which man will be used. Yours is to receive that grace. So by the time prophetic declarations are coming, if I were you, 
and I were in debt. Let me tell you how. I will open up my heart. When the word comes for your liberation, you receive it by faith and believe that something has rested upon my heart and you look with expectation. You may even verbalize it by faith that as I'm stepping out of koinonia here, that grace is guiding the right people to me, guiding me to the right people. You get back home, you take 30 minutes to soak that anointing to your spirit. Lord, I have received from your servant. I came for a miracle service in the name of Jesus. Let my Monday be an unusual Monday. I'm showing you how to engage the world. Don't just get home and say, Kai, koinonia was powerful. Oh. How about you? How was it? nice and that's it you see why it doesn't work you force it to work you provoke it to work by engaging Apostle, so what do i do with my landlord now i'm supposed to see him by 10 a.m tomorrow let me tell you what to do forget about your landlord now and look on to jesus because even if you don't forget about him you are still in that trouble and it's only god that will bring you out am i right on that so you you keep your gaze you really think God cannot speak to someone to help you and the person does not need to know you are in debt. Not everybody is greedy. There are people who are obedient. When God speaks to them, they obey. It's only that he has not asked them to bless you yet because there's something about your attitude that it has not released his power. There are people if God speaks to them, even if it's 100 million, I tell you they will obey in an instant. How many minutes does it take for an alert to get to your phone? The problem most times is we allow the mountain to cover the face of God so we cannot even see him again all we see is the mountain are you ready to receive this is what a miracle service is about you are cultured by the word to know how to receive you will see how easy it is for the power of God to touch you because once faith is there now you understand what to do you make the assignment easy for the Holy Spirit to reach you and give you testimonies. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to bring all those under the anointing. will be very, very fast. Very fast. You are not shouting. You are not doing anything. The power of God is going to begin to move. Please let me have those people here. It's not a deliverance happening to them. There is a kind of impartation that God is bringing. And I want you to bring them out. I will pray deliverance shortly afterwards. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you're revealing this to me, I'm praying that everyone, I'm seeing like oil from a bottle just flowing on the ground. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever must drink of that oil, that, that oil that sets you apart for some producing favor, for some rewriting your destiny, in the name of Jesus, please very quickly, let me have them out. Salimeneko savraskabalatu savratizilas. Inside this auditorium, outside, everywhere, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing oil by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest on people right now. Let it flow to you. Let it flow to you. For someone is bringing ease to your life. You've gone through hardship. Hardship. This is what God is taking out of your life. This cause of hardship. This yoke of hardship. Cause of hardship. Yoke of hardship. The cause of hardship. There are families who have gone through this. In the name of Jesus, God is able to give men rest. I pray that this oil will flow to you right now. Outside, inside. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let it flow. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will be surprised at the things that begin to happen to you. Some of you, even from this service, right now, before the service is done, miracles, miracles, supernatural manifestations of God's power. Let it be clear that I met you tonight. Let it be clear that I met your power tonight. Let it be clear that your wisdom has rested upon me tonight. Let it be clear that you heal through my life. I know you heal, but Lord, give me an evidence, a token tonight. Outside, pray. Let it be clear through my life that you still anoint men. 
Let it be clear through my life that you still lift burdens. Let it be clear through my life that you still cause men to remember men. Let it be clear through my life that a book of remembrance can be opened. A preacher pray. A tired mother pray. A tired father pray. Someone in debt pray. 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 Someone tired of curses, tired of demonic operations, pray. You came here to receive. You came here to receive. Sali kapelando salakrafate malakata. Leprekata belegata paratos. Let it be clear through my life that you can place fire upon a man. Let it be clear through my life that your favor can speak in the life of a man. Let it be clear through my life that you restore. Let it be clear through my... Give me the experience of the world that I become a living epistle after this miracle service. One more minute, you are praying. Across the globe, make sure you pray. Release your heart, release your faith. Knowing that God is the only helper, the only one who can help men, longevity of help resides only with the God of the Bible. All lasting help comes from God and God alone. Number two, you must have defined expectations. I'm helping to give definition to your expectations. Number three, you must believe in the Lord and believe in his servant. Believe in the Lord. And believe in the vessel that he will use number four be prepared to take actions of faith actions of obedience you're receiving the manifestation of God's promises is faith dependent insist I must walk away with a testimony a testimony of breakthrough, the help of men, deliverance, rising, lifting, a job, promotion, fresh fire upon my destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. I curse every altar. I curse every altar in the name of Jesus by the blood, by the blood. Of the eternal covenant by the blood of the eternal covenant I arrest every spirit tying down lives I arrest every spirit tying down families you give way now in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I'm hearing uh, the, the spirit of heaviness there's a, there's a manifestation of that spirit in the Bible that you'll be given a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I don't know who that is, but an anointing is coming upon you. That spirit of heaviness manifesting as depression, manifest a as suicidal thoughts in the name of Jesus. Now I declare, let it be broken, let it be broken, let it be broken, let it be broken. Now the spirit of heaviness. Be loose from it right now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the vision of a gentleman and others are walking forward. But what I'm seeing in my vision is you are walking backward. This is what I'm seeing. Not that you are looking back. You are walking back while others are going forward. This is what I see. You know, let me tell you, backwardness is a curse. Because the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. You can be backward in ministry in cream, uh, I mean progressive decline, if I will use that expression. That means there is no day that is ever better.